Hi folks, John Cordisco back again. Round two of the Gashimov Memorial, third edition. It's the third year they've had it for Vugar Gashimov. Great Azerbaijan player that passed away. I believe he had a brain tumor. Great player, nice guy too. Oh well, that's the way it goes sometimes. This is the third annual. It's also called Shamkir Chess. Named after, the, I believe, the sponsor of the event. This is a great game. Now, I do have to say, round one, all five games were drawn. In this round, they were four decisive games. When you're dealing with one of these world-class players, that's very unusual. As White from the Netherlands, Anish Geary, world-class player, rated almost 2,800. And as Black, Sergei Karyakin, formerly from the Ukraine, now Russia, world championship challenger. If you remember, Sergei won the candidates' final. I think it was a screwy setup. I think they should have tie break game, but that's just my opinion, and I don't think Fide even cares what I think, but that's okay. He is black. Let's get to it. It's going to be a symmetrical English. Gary's white. Karyakin is black. We'll go through the opening a little bit. Not really big on opening theory here on my channel, so D3, E5. It's a long game, so I want to get to it. E5, H5, H4. According to the computer off screen, that's the last book move. Now, we're on move nine. And according to the computer, it's even. I think it's a big deal, actually. That, if you see, if, 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 those of you that are wondering why they call it symmetrical, look at the pawn structures. It's all the same. All the way across. All the same. Bishops, everything. Knights, every piece. So that's why they come out the symmetrical English. I think Black's doing okay to be even so far. Bishop h6. He's enticing him to take it. Now, I'm assuming he'll take with the knight. But he decides not to. He goes, Bishop h3. Kind of pulling the same thing. Uh, it's like what you do when you're a kid. You're playing copying the other guy. But it only goes so far. Bishop takes. Rook takes. Knight f6. Well, Black would love it for White to take his light squared bishop, develops his rook, and that's what he does. So now all the bishops are off the board, which is really practical because there's a crap load of pawns on there. Those bishops wouldn't have much power anyway. And I'm sure this is all in line. These guys have seen a million times. Knight on GD2, castles, castles. So they finally got castled. It's really, really crowded. Those of you hearing some noise in the background, I live by a ballpark here in Binghamton, the Binghamton Mets in upstate New York, and they've got a fireworks display tonight. So if you hear any pounding in the background, it's the fireworks going off. Queen D7, King G2. King comes up. I would assume they're both going to try rooks over and then pawns come up. Again, this is still symmetrical. I wonder how long this is going to go. F3. Now he's got can't do it because he can't go F6. Knight D4. That's a great spot for that knight. Is he going to allow him to stay there for at least for the short term? And Gary goes rook to F2. B6 for Karyakin. A4. They seem so cautious here. But I tell you, this is a decisive game. So rook B8. Interesting move there, though. I, I don't know the purpose of that. Queen c6, I think, might be a little better. How are you going to get through? b3, rook b7. He's going to try to double up. Rook b1, rook back. Like he's asking for a draw. It's really strange. Now, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Gary wanted a draw. Gary's... He's got what I call draw-itis, where he, he gets a, he's a great player. It's almost impossible to beat him. But I would say 90% of his games plus are draws. Queen d2. Rook over. They're just maneuvering around for a while. Queen b7. I mean, I was trying to make heads or tail as this as a player. Why the hell do you even develop a plan? Knight g8. Now the computer's showing that. That's 
where the knight wants to end up going in the end to b4. Knight d5, knight comes up. Finally, knight takes, pawn takes. Knight f4, doesn't want to give up the knight. Queen d7, rook e2. How is black going to break through here? How, how is... How's white going to break through for that matter? Well, right now we can with here, but it doesn't really break through that much. Knight c6. Queen to d2. They're maneuvering around for a while. Knight b7, which is a good square for that knight. Makes the queen babysit the d3 pawn for white. Rook comes over. Rook e5 is trying to stop white from moving the pawn. Knight h3 is bringing the knight around. Rook comes back. F4. Finally. We're going to get some pawn moves here. F6. Queen D1. Don't know what they're thinking. I don't have a clue what the plan is here. Rook H8. King H2. Queen G4. Finally the queen gets in. King G2. And this is where I think, according to the computer, Kariak and miscues. He plays rook to e8. And right now, white is up a point and a half. I think a better move might have been queen to c8 instead of the rook move. But he moves the rook move, and now seems to be a problem. f5. Now he's opening up the position. Now this sometimes happens when you have a closed position like this where you're just shuffling pieces and nobody's really paying a lot of attention to what's going on. And then all of a sudden you make one small miscue and the game opens wide open. G takes, knight f2, hitting the queen, queen has to move, pawn takes. And this is where it gets screwed up a little bit. This is where we start trading in one of those deals where we trade two rooks or a rook and a knight for a queen. Rook has to take. Pawn takes the queen. Takes the other rook. Rook takes the pawn. Now, this is very hairy. For those keeping score, it's a queen and a pawn for white against two rooks. Now, normally two rooks would be a little bit better. But not in this case. Look at Black's king. He's in a lot of trouble. He has to play rook h8. Now queen to f3. Now the queen's going to start going to start raising hell. Rook e3. Queen g4. I'll be honest with you. I know there's an attack coming, but I kind of like queen here. Start than this pawn, and then they all start to go. Queen g4 wants to save that pawn. Rook. Give you an idea instead. If knight had taken that pawn. Knight takes. Rook takes. H5. <laughs> and white is doomed. Absolutely doomed. What's he going to do? Rook checks. King h3. He's done. So that free pawn wasn't so free. Queen of d7, check. Here comes the queen. King takes the pawn. Now he's got the king out in the open. Sometimes your own pawn acts as a shield and you want to get rid of it. Knight e4. Knight takes the pawn finally. Queen checks. King h6. Knight takes. Rook f8. Now this isn't resignable yet, but it's damn near. Damn near resignable. According to the computer, it's an almost four-point advantage for white. Now we're down to two rooks for the queen. And I think this gives you an idea of Kariakin's, we'll call it fighting spirit. Maybe he's trying to set up some kind of fortress. But he's not giving up. I don't think anybody gave up in this position, but he's playing Geary really hard now. Knight checks. He has to. He has to take the, the knight because if he moves the king, 
to h7 is queen g7 check. Mate. So rook has to take, queen takes. So now we're down to a rook and a knight against the queen. Can Karak set up a fortress? We'll see. And they start doing a lot of maneuvering now. He's gobbling up a couple of pawns. And now queen to d2 stopping that. But the problem is there's another piece to help out capturing that pawn on d3. King g7, a5. He's going to push his own pawn for a while. But the problem is the knight is holding that d3 pawn. Knight c6, a6, king f7, h5. Gets the other pawn going. Knight b4, h6. He's got to move the king to stop it. Queen to f4. Interesting, interesting. What would you do here? Well, those of you that would push the pawn, queen checks, picking up the rook. The pawn is here and now cannot queen. And even if the knight could save it, the queen would sacrifice itself and the a-pawn would run. So he has to go rook d4. And this is a heck of a move. We'll call it a deflection move. H7. Gives up the queen. Give me an idea. After H7, a king had taken. Queen C7, check. And that's the end. Computer shows mate in 14. Pretty funny. After H7, rook takes. Pawn takes. Now D2. Interesting there. Let's go back here for a second because that's kind of interesting. King can't take the pawn, but black can't leave the rook there either. So he has to take a pawn take, or excuse me, queens first, then d2, and then queen checks. And it's resignable now. But Kariakin won't give it up. Gives you an idea how determined he is. Maybe he's just showing... Carlson that he's got the fighting spirit. Queen checks. King g6. Queen e8. Twofold repetition. King h6. Queen e2. Can't save the pawn. He's going to try with a rook. He just goes a7. So Kariakin decides I'm going to queen. Queen takes, rook takes, now he has a queen. Now we're back to rook and a knight, but it's still doomed. Rook checks, king f3, rook checks, king f4. Rook takes the pawn, king e4. Now the king's coming over. And that's where Kariakin gives it up to give you an idea. Best move, knight c2. Queen checks, king g6, queen g8 check, king h6, queen f7. It's over. So Kariakin throws in the towel. His first loss after his candidate's final victory. Now, they don't play till November, but these guys are very proud. They're great players, and they very rarely lose. So this is a tough loss for Kariakin. Let's see if he can bounce back from this. So there you have it, one of the games from round two of the Gashimov Memorial 2016, third edition. Hope you enjoyed it. I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.